Hello, it's Angel. Just felt to share share my perspective out in the big wide world. Been poring over perspectives of many, many people for many, many years. Sort of my nature, kind of philosophical, mystic, scientific, intuitive, you know, watching and looking and taking it all in, asking the big questions, who am I, what do I want? Those, those two questions kind of started it all about 15 years ago. But prior to that, I was already asking lots of questions. I went to medical school in 1986, graduated in 1990, licensed in 1992, worked full time for five years, and I summarized my career in medicine, I guess with two simple tenants. <laughs> One, spitting into the wind. I really didn't see how allopathic medicine was addressing human health at the most fundamental level. And number two, um, medical training was pretty dehumanizing. So that was an experience. And I guess I really love to learn through experience. And therefore, I've had lots of experiences, as I'm sure every one of us has. And I guess after all this pontification and exploration and experience and inquisitive curiosity, sort of with that fundamental scientific method somewhat, but at, at some point I sort of dropped even that. And I guess Partly why is I, I feel like the most fundamental science, if we want to use science as our framework to run our world, the fundamental science to me is the physics of consciousness. So, is it in, present in our world systems right now? No, I don't think it is. I would love to see the conversation start to shift and change because I think now we've gotten to a place where, I don't know, I would love to think that we're all a little bit curious, how did this happen? <laughs> how can we be in such a polarized state over many, many things? But I guess this mask issue seems to bring it to the forefront. And I do remember the moment when I heard that my city was oh. making masks uh -huh. mandatory. Oh, excuse me. This is Colonel. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's coughing when they talk about masks. Uh -huh. That's funny. Okay, careful now. And this, for the first moment, I realized, oh, I can't just put a foot in both worlds and kind of go along with the flow. If I really believe something, now I have to, you know, be visible as a, as a visible minority in a way that I never have before. So I think myself, like many, we've had experiences where we were the only unmasked person in a store. <laughs> and the only reason, I was a little bit wimpy. I, I do get a little bit afraid sometimes. And, kind of reminds you, like when you run into, like this dog, Colonel, met a little kitten, my daughter's cat, and the instant reaction of that little kitten was to hiss and make his tail big and <laughs> So that's kind of how I see the public right now, like I mean, I don't mean any harm, I'm really quite a peaceful person, I'd love to, I really dream so deeply and sincerely in my heart for harmony in the world. I have so much compassion for the situation we all find ourselves in, but how do you, you can't really explain that in a store when you're wearing a mask, truly believing in my heart that I'm at no risk, I'm causing no risk to anyone. But they believe differently. And you know, to be the respect you want to see in the world, yeah, of course. There's a story, the, em the Emperor's New Clothes. I heard one other person share that same perspective where I keep seeing that, like, if you're the one, the kid, who said, hey, the emperor's naked. <laughs> and everyone was like, whoa, everyone was kind of going along with it. Like, he believes he's wearing fancy clothes because someone kind of made him kind of connect to his human, what do you call it, to that human quality of not feeling good enough. He, you know, he was told that if you're intelligent, then these clothes will appear. So he had to pretend to be intelligent because deep in his heart he didn't really believe that and he was sort of hoodwinked, kind of using his weakness against him, you know? That means anything, but in the mystic world, 
sometimes the higher concepts come through metaphor. And so I just throw that up as a metaphor. That's how I think, but I know that's not how everyone thinks. But I would love to be part of the solution. The solutions. I do feel and have felt for decades that we have an unsustainable system of systems. And then you think, how? Why? What happened? How could that be? I actually, in the last six months, do truly believe I understand now how that happened. And I may say that at the end, I don't know. But I guess um, the physics of consciousness, to me that would be like raising the stage and changing the conversation. Because you can, I guess my analogy for the, what I feel the physics of consciousness has to offer is that I see most people as believing themselves truly, deeply, and sincerely, so it is true for them, that they're like a camera, you know, the world is physically there and I take a still shot and I get the picture back because I have no influence, that's just all outside me, I'm the camera, I can take pictures of that reality. And I think the physics of consciousness points to the fact that maybe we're actually, we, we can choose to function that way for sure, Often I feel that choice isn't a little conscious one because it's sort of been entrained in, in our education system in it and in our unsustainable system of systems. But truly, I believe, and I think a lot of spirituality and you know you hear you know real time stories of of Yogananda as an example. You know some really what would be considered miraculous abilities in human beings that are actually displayed. But of course, if you don't see it and you don't experience it for yourself, it can seem like impossible, absolutely not. But we are more like video projectors, like we can project what we see outside us is kind of coming from inside. So the idea that consciousness is the fundamental building block of our reality. So I guess I can call it a theory. Personally, I feel that I know that, the, that it's true and I, and I get it, like I have compassion for the idea that that wouldn't be easy to hear for many people. But I guess I just want to start talking a little bit, like let's find some different ways to discuss this with each other and actually have respectful conversations to start with. You know, I don't see a really good platform available in a wide way anyway. So I think I've been inspired by other people sharing their truth in a compassionate, neutral way, you know, trying to just be a part of the conversation. So I guess I, I do feel to join in the conversation in this world as to what's going on. But I think with all of the reflections that I've had over the years, and particularly in the last few months, I love to go back to two basic questions. What is a human being and what is reality? Like, I think we have a lot of lack of agreement on those two things. And yet fundamentally, I think if we understood what is a human being truly, and what is reality, then we could sort of, I think, it, connect with our freedom to choose. If there's anything that I wish more, right in this moment, it would be to bring about a conscious awareness to every single sentient being in this world that there is choice. There's more choice than what we are accustomed to knowing. So, um, what is a human being? I guess in a nutshell, I'll probably put as a profile pic, or the, what do you call it, the, the picture that represents this video, sort of a depiction of a human being, and then there's these fields, and electromagnetic fields that go all around us, that are created by us, you know, that our heart has a field, and that HeartMath Institute is very nicely and scientifically depicted in their work that our hearts field is, can be actually quite large and quite powerful when it's res when it's coherent. They use the word coherent, that it's, anyways, I'm not going to even get into that, but the idea that there's such a thing as a coherent field. So if a human being is, you know, we, allopathic medicine tends to think of us as a little more meat and bones and chemistry and, and uh, genetics in and, and a little bit more of a concrete way and yet kind of ignores this whole field concept of, which I think is a part of our anatomy. So we're, you know, we have a huge system, allopathic medicine, 
that's completely interlocked and intertwined with all the other systems, the, the financial system, the economic system, da 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 da, you get it. Like, so allopathic medicine doesn't recognize this non-visible portion of our anatomy, which is definitely scientifically um, able to look at. It's like, it's like a Heart Math Institute, I guess I got connected to it over a decade ago. So this is not new. And I think a lot of alternative health practitioners are aware and take into account the fact of these non-physical, non-visible components. And then the fact that, you know, we've got our five physical senses, but we have other senses as well, you know, intuitive knowing. And some people, you know, work on that. And I certainly have for myself, almost like a full-time job for the last 10 years, really exploring what is possible for a human being and how do we create our reality, what is consciousness, and how can we create our reality. So it's, I guess I ask you the question, do you believe that you create your reality? And it's one to ponder. I, I actually do believe that, that we do, but most, I think a majority of people aren't consciously aware of that. And so they're kind of um, given messages to recreate someone else's creation. And I think it's gotten pretty slick. The system's pretty slick. Mainstream media has a way of sort of focusing in on an area of reality and sort of ne negating and neglecting so many other portions of reality. My gentle advice would be to take your eye off the microscope and look around. You know, are you willing to consider with your own experience what is possible. You know, my, my personal mission statement is to enable and empower optimal human health. Not really knowing what optimal human health is, and yet I'm getting as, you know, because I chose that exploration, what you choose to see is kind of going to be more seen. So if you really don't choose to explore that, then reality will stay uh, however way you choose to, to see it. <laughs> that probably wasn't sounding too slick, but anyway. So what is a human being? One good question, which I guess would generate probably a lot of debate, and possibly even within scientific communities. And then what is reality? So I guess quantum physics really had made some discoveries in about 1940 and really didn't get incorporated into the wider world systems. You know, there, some of the discoveries there were controversial, difficult to integrate with prior known knowledge. And so it just hasn't been incorporated. And I think many people who do choose to explore that, you know, the idea of multi-locality and observer effect, it, it, it's pretty significant actually because when you look at any scientific study that's done has those contributing factors you know because I do believe they're more fundamental and they're not being incorporated but they are having an effect just based on natural law I guess I'll, I'll just shift gears and talk about the Hippocratic Oath. <laughs> First, do no harm, which is an oath that I took when I graduated medical school. And I think most doctors that are practicing now took that oath as well. Behind the oath though, like I always knew it, yeah, first do no harm, that makes sense. But I think behind that oath is the idea that, that I think got kind of sidestepped quite, quite a many decades ago, hundreds of years ago or whenever that behind that oath is saying, you know, it's better to do nothing than to do something that's harmful. And so if you really take that oath sincerely, so much of what we do in medicine, we probably would not choose to do it. I came to believe in my practice of medicine that that oath was being broken on a daily routine basis. And I know that sounds like a big statement, but that is my experience. And just to give a little background of how I'll just really superficially address it. But after one year of practice, I remember thinking, wow, I was a family doctor and in an urban practice. 
after doing a locum in a, a rural practice, which was actually a lot more satisfying. Ooh, that's 15 minutes. Ooh, I was trying to make this short. But anyways, I did pour into certain four different topics, asthma, cholesterol, high blood pressure, and postmenopausal care. And I just looked at all the research. I really thought, okay, I don't have the time to look at everything, but those are four common conditions that come into my office. When I poured through them, I was actually shocked. Like, literally shocked. I've already gone through medical school, I've practiced for a year, and I was disappointed and shocked and dismayed that so many of the decisions were kind of made at a round table. They weren't the gold standard, double blind, placebo, but anyway, the placebo effect, nocebo effect, kind of go into the physics of consciousness. If you believe something is true, it's true. If you believe something is not true, it's not true for you. So I guess my big, I just want to change the conversation so badly. I'd love to see, like, televised tribunals of truth, you know, where we get different people, different perspectives respectfully shared. It would be really cool. I think it would be a real upgrade for our, you know, we all take in a lot of entertainment, a lot of shared messages, and just kind of dig in. If, if there were, a, I think the only thing missing really is willingness, and I do recognize there's a lot of things in place that would challenge the willingness to really do that. But um, I think it's it's a time where individuals, you know, we really do have choices to make. I, I guess <laughs> I really didn't want to make this long, so I have to cut it short now. I'm really willing to talk to anyone who could respectfully choose and be willing to share ideas because I, I really do appreciate where most people sit right now. You know, you what can you believe you're getting these people are all saying this and I have to tell you there has been a ton of censorship for anyone giving a message that isn't going along with kind of the status quo and the you know whoever is behind who gets to deliver their messages widely and who doesn't but I really am willing to have discussions and I think the more willing we all are I, I crave connection to other human beings in a respectful way but I've had to up my game and really increase my compassion and not be, you know, jumping to a knee-jerk reaction and calling someone ignorant because they don't feel how I do. I used to feel the way most people do. I really do. So I really did. So I really feel that I understand that. And I'm willing to discuss very gently with anyone who feels called. I mean, I don't know how the world will go, but I would love to participate and connect and communicate as sincerely as I possibly can. And whoever's willing, Mwah. peace, <laughs> prosperity, abundance, health for all. Yay.